of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. And on today's program, we get an update from Lieutenant Wani In of the Quincy Salvation Army. First, though, as always, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, gorgeous, brilliant sunshine out there. It's already 80 degrees. We're headed for the sunny, breezy mid 80s this afternoon. Uh, Delightful way to round out August tonight. Clear, comfortable, lows will drop off into the mid 60s and not a bad holiday weekend coming up. I think tomorrow really is the pick of the Labor Day weekend with a mix of clouds and sun. It'll be a comfortable with a high around 80 degrees. We welcome in September on Sunday with more clouds. It'll be cooler too. Sunday's highs only in the lower 70s and Labor Day itself looks a little damp. Start out cloudy, maybe some showers in the afternoon with temperatures Monday into the mid 70s. Again, sunshine and 80 degrees in Quincy right now. In the news today, a judge has agreed to let the city of Quincy continue in its efforts to try and stop Boston from rebuilding the Long Island Bridge. A Suffolk Superior Court judge ruled that Quincy's lawsuit against Boston can move forward. Quincy Mayor Thomas Cope calls that a victory in the battle, but says the war with Boston will continue. Well, the judge thought we had some merit in it, so it's going to uh, uh, cause uh, Boston to spend more time and energy on it. Uh, I believe also that it will require them to show their work on the uh, on the alternate analysis, which is something we've been pushing, which is water transportation. We believe they just rejected it and never really did any real planning or analysis of it. And uh, so the judge says that's in, that's a fair point. So that's in play now, too. So at the very minimum, it's going to probably extend the permitting process out uh, a good year anyway. Hmm. Um, so, um, I'm, you know, I'm pleased because we worked very hard with our teams on this, and we raised what we felt were very valid points. And, uh, and the judge agreed with us on that. So I think Boston was trying to, you know, just ram it through. Uh, and uh, fortunately, now they have to take a step back and do a lot more work on the environmental aspect of things. The city of Quincy is trying to convince the state to require Boston to perform an in-depth environmental review of the proposed bridge project. The state previously ruled that Boston did not have to perform the environmental review because there was a bridge in place previously. Quincy's arguing that a new bridge would cause environmental damage and also cause some dangerous traffic in Squantum and North Quincy. Boston says it wants to replace the bridge and open up a substance abuse treatment center on Long Island. State Department of Environmental Protection will review the proposal to replace the former Beachcomber nightclub on Quincy Shore Drive with a new three-story building. The developers want to tear down the existing building and create a new project with several dining options and third floor office space. There would be 89 parking spaces. Neighbors have raised concerns about how the development would impact the already flood-prone area. So the planning board's asking the state to review the project. The proposal is back before the Quincy Planning Board on November 13th. Those two Dor Dorchester men who were shot early Wednesday morning on Rodman Street in South Quincy are not cooperating with police. Investigators say the 40-year-old and the 23-year-old are not helping police identify the sh two shooters believed responsible for firing a total of 27 shots during the incident just before 2 a.m. on Wednesday. The 40-year-old man was shot five times. The younger man was shot once in the leg outside the home. They're both being treated at Boston Medical Center. The police say the two-family house was riddled with bullet holes. It's unclear if the shooters were in a vehicle or on foot. Police also say the shooting was not random and may have been gang-related. Quincy police believe the same man is responsible for two recent armed robberies. Police say the gunman held up the Five Corners Market on Newbury Avenue on the night of August 17th and Mullaney's Convenience Store on West Squantum Street the night of August 18th. In both cases, the suspect appears to be a tall black male armed with a handgun. Cash was stolen from Mullaney's. Cash and cigarettes were taken from the Five Corners store. Anybody with information is asked to contact Quincy Police. Well, more than 1,000 youngsters will have brand new backpacks to take with them when they return to school next week, thanks to generous donors to Interfaith Social Services here in Quincy. Their annual backpack drive is being called a huge success this year. 
as a record setting number of families have been reaching out to Interfaith for help once again this year. Interfaith Executive Director Rick Doan says the backpacks and the school supplies were donated by area businesses and individuals and then distributed recently by hundreds of volunteers who made sure each backpack was filled with notebooks, pens, pencils, markers, crayons, combination locks, and other school supplies. Now that you are up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for you for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. Starts with a replay of this program currently in Quincy at 5 o'clock. Then at 5.30, Sound Advice with Attorney Tom Williams. Hello folks, I'm Attorney Tom Williams and welcome to Sound Advice. Messages from the candidates in the September 10th preliminary election at 6 o'clock. A.M. Quincy, tonight at 6.30, we feature the friends of the Thomas Crane Library. Then at 7 o'clock, it's The Call, Summer Delights and Happy School Year. Hi, everybody. At 8 o'clock, the recent Barry J. Welch Field Dedication Ceremony. <laughs> Messages from the candidates again tonight at 8.45 on Channel 8. Then at 9 o'clock a.m. Quincy, it's the Friends of Wollaston Beach. Faces of South Asia, personal development, tonight at 9.30 on Channel 8. And at 10 o'clock this past summer's 215th Army Band Concert at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Check out Channel 9 every day. You'll learn about Quincy City Department's different committee activities. All starts at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. Six o'clock, the Norfolk County Prevention Coalition program. Tonight, vaping education. FYI from the Quincy Health Department at 6.30. The topic is back to school. At a QA TV Classic at 7 o'clock, TV production workshop from 2007. At 8 o'clock, In the, the Know, learn about a lead abatement program here in Quincy. Followed by In the Know at 8.30 with a preview of the upcoming preliminary election. 9 o'clock, we're at the Kennedy Center with a recent MEMA Safety Preparedness Workshop. Find out what's happening at your library for the month of September at 9.30. Welcome to At Your Library. Get a complete program schedule over on our website. It's QATV.org. Then click on Program Schedule. And as always, do please like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And don't forget, too, you can check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we take a look at a few of the current events and activities featured right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for you to know about. Please stay tuned. We're back with you in just one minute. Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities that are being featured right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for you to know about. Reminder that the Quincy Farmers Market is still open on Fridays from 11.30 to 5 up at Pageant Field. It's now in its 37th season. You'll find locally grown fruits and vegetables, local artisans and crafters, plus free live entertainment every Friday too. Check out QuincyFarmersMarket.com for more information. Second annual Spotlight on Parkinson's Disease is being held on September 20th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. over at Florian Hall in Dorchester. This is being sponsored by St. Elizabeth's Medical Center. You should register today by calling 617-789-3320. The Atlantic Symphony Orchestra performing on Sunday, September 8th at the Abbey. At Sunsets, visit their website, Atlantic Symphony org to learn all about it. And Faith Lutheran Church here in Quincy will hold a collection drive for the homeless on September 8th 
from 9.30 to 11. Everyone's invited to enjoy some coffee and snacks during this collection for clients of Father Bill's Homeless Shelter. And if you have an event or an activity you'd like to promote, visit our website, qatv.org. Just download a bulletin board request form, fill it out and send it in. Get that message up here on Channel 8 too. Coming up, we sit down and chat with Lieutenant Wani Inn of the Quincy Salvation Army. That's next. Welcome back. We're pleased to welcome actually back to the program in a different role. Lieutenant Wani Inn of the Quincy Salvation Army is joining us uh, this morning to chat a little bit about uh, summer activities that have been happening at the Quincy Salvation Army. Also some maybe some upcoming events as well. And uh, Wani, it's good to see you again. Hi, it's good to be back. Yeah, you were here before. I was about, I think about three years ago I okay. was, yeah. And in, in what capacity at that time? Oh, at that time I was here just as a cadet, meaning kind of like a, an intern. Um, I was at the seminary school studying to be a pastor and officer in the Salvation Army. And uh, they saw how much I loved Quincy, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, but just a few months later, I got appointed uh, back to Quincy, Massachusetts at the Salvation Army here. So well, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. So tell us a little bit about your journey through the Salvation Army, how that started. Uh, my journey through the Salvation Army started at the around the age of six wow. okay. uh, and so I was born and raised in Lowell mm -hmm. and then it was through Vacation Bible School that it's a summer program week long that they do it's like fun stuff for kids so like singing dancing arts and crafts all that stuff um, and the officers at the time visited our home and then invited my family and I and we've loved it since so <laughs> the Salvation Army in Lowell just kind of became our home after oh, that. Very good. Now, had there been any previous experience in your family with the Salvation Army? Not no. at all. Actually, my parents grew up Buddhist. Oh. So we are different, like, different, different religions. Oh, yeah. All right. And then. Oh, how did they feel about you becoming uh, involved in the Salvation Army? Well, they were they were confused. Yeah. I can tell you that. Um, I was actually a college student when I first told them about oh, this. You rebel, I, you. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I was, it was it was different for my parents, yeah. and you know, first first child to go to college too, and to be like, hey, sorry, I'm actually dropping out to be a pastor, <laughs> and then they were like, what is happening? Right, right. So. Well, they they always obviously had a path in mind for you to travel. Oh sure. Sure, yeah. But you had different plans. <laughs> uh, where did you go to college? I actually went to college at Eastern Nazarene College. Oh, you did? I did, yeah. Oh. I was uh, majoring in bio and then switched over to youth ministry. Okay. And then was going to was playing volleyball there at the time, too. Oh, wow. Okay. So there, there's been a, a con connection to Quincy for a long time with oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so after that, after college, what happened then? Um, after college, I, I left, so I finished off the year, and then I went to go work as the youth ministries coordinator at the Salvation Army in Waltham. Oh, okay. Um, and I did about a little over a year there before I became accepted into the seminary school. And then I left and was in New York for about two years and oh. then have been in Quincy since 2017. Wow. What did you do in New York? Um, in New York, I was just a student. Okay. I was just, uh, we were called cadets. I see. Uh, so we would learn things academically, like a lot of uh, religion classes. And then we would do a lot of field work as well. Okay. So hands on. Interestingly, when you were a cadet, here in Quincy, it was under Lieutenants Tim and Nicole Ross, yes. who are now running the Lowell chapter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny how the world works. Yeah. So it's been a long, it's been a long journey with Captains Tim and Nicole because they were my pastors when I was a college student. Oh, they were. Yep. And then, um, and then I came back and was their cadet, and then came back and then was their <laughs> lieutenant. And I'm now back, I'm back. Again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a long line. Right. Right. So what is it about Quincy that you like, Quanny? I think I'm a city girl. Yeah. I'm just Lowell and Quincy are very similar in communities mm -hmm. and the environment. I just love the diversity and the integration of not just people but activities mm. and things that happen. Um, and plus, Boston is just about right. 20 minutes away, yep. so that's always a perk. Okay, all right. So just on the other side of of the city yeah. this time around. So yeah. I went from the North Shore to the South right. Shore. Now is your family still up in Lowell? Yeah, my family's still up in Lowell. Okay. So. Okay. Obviously, uh, now the Quincy uh, chapter is under new leadership, uh, yes. Captains uh, Kyle and Amber Maynard. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that there's some initiatives to maybe reach out to the Asian community. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that if you can. Yeah, could. so uh, a growing, growing up, there are a lot of leaders in the Salvation Army that actually came out of the Quincy Corps. Mm. Um, and one of them, meaning our territorial commanders, uh, who are like head who oversee the Salvation Armies across the Eastern Territory are from Quincy. Oh, who and are so they? Uh, 
they're now Commissioners Lorraine and Bill Bamford. Okay. So they, growing up, they always saw that there was always a need for the Asian community, just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been appointed here as one of my responsibilities to kind of build connections and relationships in the community and see what we can best do uh, to benefit and, and to also help however way is possible. Yeah, what um, have you identified, I guess, as some of the needs in that community right now? Oh, we have. I mean, we service a lot of the Asian community during our social services, so our food pantry has grown tremendously because when one comes, they tell the other yes. and everyone Word starts mouth, coming. It's still yep. a great form of it advertising. It still works. Yeah. Um, um, but we're hoping to build a program where either we help with translation, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked with some other partnerships in the community and see where we can fit in uh, without you know duplicating something that's already happening. Right. Yeah. There is, of course, Quincy Asian Resources, which you're well uh, yeah. familiar with as well. Um, it, but maybe um, your services could be bilingual, perhaps. You know, yeah. at some point, something of that nature. Um, the population itself uh, is is growing exponentially. I would say in Quincy, when the 2020 census comes out next year, I think we'll really get a good sense for yeah. what the actual Asian population is in the city. Um, but you're not dealing just with uh, with older folks. You're dealing with kids. Yes. Yeah. Tell <laughs> us about that. Uh, the kids are great. Yeah. We love we love the kids. It's been weird because the summer ended. We don't see them very often. Right. Um, but we are jumping right back into our programs in the next few weeks. Uh, so we do a lot of like troops kind of Boy Scout, Girl Scout type programs. We do a lot of music programs with the kids. So like teaching them brass music to guitar, to uh -huh. singing, to dancing. Okay. To ev you know, everything that you can possibly think of. Yeah, so we actually have some video of, uh, of uh, summer camp activities we want to show folks and, yeah. and you can tell us a little bit about what we're seeing while you're talking about mm -hmm. them. There they are. Oh, there <laughs> it is, yep. Uh, so you see here some summer camp. It's called Camp Wonderland. It's oh. in Sharon, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, I actually grew up there and work there, wow. uh, so that is also home. But you just see kids having fun. <laughs> uh, they do a lot of like cabin activities together, but then they also do their own programs with different clubs. So as you can see, there's some archery, uh, arts and crafts. Go these kids love these carts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they get to drive it around during the recreational <laughs> area. Um, but overall, it's like just a it's just a mesh of like everything you can possibly like dream of when you're not at home yeah um <laughs> so yeah uh, and there's we, no the answer is always yes at yes, camp right yeah. always <laughs> well because you have no choice too because you're with your counselors all the time sure um but this year uh, in the quincy salvation army we send kids too so every salvation army has a certain amount of slots that they can get mm -hmm. and this year we've exceeded our slots in comparison to last year too in sending kids including those from the community so we sent well over 30 plus kids wow. this year um, so that's a combination of church kids plus community kids I see. Okay. Um, and it's been it's been awesome because a lot of the kids didn't even know that the Salvation Army was a church to begin with. Right. So once they found out, like there's a moment during camp called Jesus Theater, where it's a story of Jesus being played out in like a choreo drama. Okay. And at the end, the kids have an opportunity to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And when they realize that that's what they did, and they're like, what's next? And we're <laughs> like, well, there's church. Like, you can <laughs> always come to church. Yeah. Um, so that's like always the special moments of camp besides all the swimming and the arts and crafts and the playing around, there's right. always those special moments too. Yeah, and, and who can participate, Wani, you know, and how do they do that? Oh, at camp? Mm. Well, anyone, usually camp runs from ages six to 12, okay. um, but we always encourage people to, to try and participate in the local Salvation Armies if they would like to work there as yeah. well. Yeah, like um, you did. Yes, yeah. yeah, just so the Salvation Army is its own world in itself. Right. So some of the lingo to like DYS or just the little acronyms, mm -hmm. um, they, it can help them understand a little bit what the Salvation Army is and you know, who are these people in uniform, right, essentially. Right. Yeah, just ask questions, right, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Uh, is it open to anybody, all, all children? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, open, it's open to anyone and, and everyone. Okay. And so the summer camp runs from the beginning of June, so like around the last week of school. Right. And it just ended about a few weeks ago in August. Okay. But it runs seven sessions and holds about a capacity of over 200 kids wow. each. And it's only about five days, four nights. Um, and it's an overnight camp, okay. but the kids seem to love it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. is there a cost at all for that? There is a cost, okay. but uh, the Salvation local Salvation Armies are different into offsetting what they 
you know, we're very well aware of situations that, that arise, but, and we're very accommodating to okay. that. Okay, all right. And the thing I noticed, too, about that video is it's, uh, it's a very diverse cultural background, too. Yes. kids of all, all ethnicities, mm -hmm. um, probably all religions and mm -hmm. all cultures as well. Yeah, I think one of the, my favorite things about camp that I absolutely loved is um, you're, you're meeting with different kids from all over Massachusetts. Right. You know, from, from Quincy all the way to Greenfield, from Greenfield all the way to North Adams, yeah. you know. Just like these random towns that you didn't even know existed. And as a kid, it's like a dream when you walk in and you don't kind of, you kind of don't know anyone, but then you see someone that maybe looks like you mm. or someone that looks a little different. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's so comforting to be in an environment such as camp and feel safe and you know feel well protected yeah yeah so are you a uh, counselor now no I, no I mean I'm I'm just I'm the uh, assistant corps officer at the Salvation Army oh, right. here in Quincy so you just have to do the paperwork and stuff. I just do the paperwork yeah. we take the kids to camp but my siblings work at camp too so oh. uh, the kids tell me everything from what my <laughs> siblings tell them so I hear a lot of stories I bet, definitely yeah. from camp and you can probably relate because you probably did them yourself when you were in camp yeah <laughs> yeah and they're always like this happened and I was like wait back in my day this right. absolutely did not happen these kids today they don't know yeah uh, what are some of your other responsibilities here at the Quincy chapter uh, well in the Quincy Salvation Army right now I just we just work a lot with the kids programs, the uh, women's club that we do on oh. Thursdays. Okay, tell me about yeah. that. Uh, well, the women meet. It's a time where they'll eat lunch together and uh, they just talk. We hang out. Sometimes we go out once a month. They just enjoy doing stuff like that, mm. things that they can't do and, you know, not that they can't do by themselves, mm -hmm. but things they like to do together as women. So it's all about empowerment and it's all about just being together and enjoying each other's company. Um, Mostly. Okay, so that's Thursdays. Uh, when Thursdays at eleven thirty. At the, the at Quincy the chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and open to anyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is we would love we would love new women. Okay. So. Is now is it uh, senior citizens or just all? No. Ages well, or? right now it's it's more it's collectively gearing towards like the older age. Just because. Um, just of because the demographic, that's right? yeah, just yeah. where we are at, at the current moment. But right. we are open to having young to middle age to old to you know any age, and okay. we would love have more women come. Okay. Is there a, a cost for that at all? No, it's no. actually it's free. Okay. So that's a hidden secret it in the city. It is a hidden that secret. We'll get out for you. Okay. What else? Uh, so, so as I mentioned before, we do troops on Tuesdays. Right. We do music lessons on Wednesdays. Uh, the Salvation Army also does volleyball first, third, and if there's a fifth Friday of every month. Um, and that is my favorite time. Like I today. Uh, not today, but <laughs> no. we'll be starting up in the next okay. few weeks because right. people are still on vacation gotcha. or kids are not in school yet. Okay. So parents are a little preoccupied oh, yeah, I guess. for right now. Um, and then just working on continuing to develop this uh, Chinese ministry, this Asian ministry within the Salvation Army. Yeah, do you anticipate maybe like a satellite location in you know the north end of the city perhaps or well you know I think I think our goal right now is to try and be integrated mm -hmm. to show the different aspects and diversities and perspectives of the Salvation Army because um, the Salvation Army is located over 130 countries mm -hmm. you know and we would like to show that you know the Salvation Army is is more than just your typical traditional church you know we want to be uh, diverse and, and integrated as much as possible with every race, ethnicity possible. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think what's something people don't think about too is that the Army will respond to emergencies just like the Red Cross will. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, be it a any kind of a storm or mm -hmm. we're talking about hurricanes this time of year, you know, uh, yeah. coastal storms coming up through the winter time as well. Uh, and then community events um, as well, mm -hmm. you know, to have your, your courtesy canteen, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Um, just to help the first responders or people that might be impacted in, in some type of a natural disaster or man made disaster for that matter. Yeah. yeah. Are you involved in that aspect of it? I am. I'm currently not. No, I would okay. I would love to be one would you? day. Yeah. yeah uh, but I am very grateful and I admire those who you know, choose to be front lines right. and being where the people are. And I think that's that's why I love the Salvation Army growing up and even still until now is the fact that the, the Army wants to be where the people are. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a history of William Booth uh, who started the Salvation Army way back in the 1800s. And his ultimate goal was that he wants to meet where people are at. And, you know, whether that's down the street where no one ever wants to go mm. or down the alleyway that is dark and dingy, yeah. you know, like that's that's the mission of the Army is to really be where people are in the midst of disaster. So, I, I mean, I admire and I'm so grateful for the work that 
others do with the emergency, emergency disaster services. And I know too, speaking of reaching out, uh, you're utilizing social media more than ever, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. We are very active on our Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, the Instagram page has so far been very good. We've, we've you know, had heard from different local uh, people uh, that are in Quincy and mm -hmm. are seeing what we do. We do our live stream services from Instagram, oh, okay. which is really cool. Um, but on Facebook, we now are posting a lot in regards to our social services, our programs, because we want people to know that we do offer programs and that we do do things for kids and, and adults and older adults. And so we want to be on the spectrum as, mus as much as possible. Great. Well, that's the place to be these, mm -hmm. these days, that's for it sure. Is. So I hope we helped get the word out for you a little bit yeah. here too as well. Lieutenant, nice to meet you again. Yeah. Well, thank Thank you for having me. I mean, you know, it's been a pleasure. Likewise. We'll have you back, too. Yeah. <laughs> Just enough time to recap the weather forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Absolutely spectacular. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, breezy and mild in the mid-80s this afternoon. Comfortable tonight, mid-60s. Still pretty nice tomorrow as we wrap up August with sun and clouds near 80. A little cloudier, cooler for the first day of September. Labor Day looks a little damp right now. Thanks again going out to Lieutenant Wani In for joining us. Thank you. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. We are off Monday for Labor Day. Back here next Friday with the car doctor, John Paul from AAA on another live edition of Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.